There were a couple other members that said they would be attending, but um, they're not here yet. But I'd like to get going. And then there's Len. So, hey guys, how are you? Good. So it's October fifth, two thousand twenty, seven thirty p.m. And I call this meeting of the Needham Design Review Board to order. I'm Mark Lucing, the board chair. I would like to confirm that all the members and applicants expected on the agenda are present and can hear me. So when I call your name, please respond. Uh, no, Nelly. So Len Karen. Present. Chad Riley. Present. Deborah Robinson. Present. Steve Tanner. Present. Okay. And also attending our, our town staff persons, Ron Amana Dorfer and Elisa Lichman. So I'm gonna call out the applicants and if you would respond with your name, please. Or, and if there's more than one of you, you could both do it. Um, Stretch Med Studios, 1093 Great Plain Avenue. Here. Present. And give me your names, please, just for the record. Brian Cook. Daniel Sheehan. Thank you. Petco and Vetco Total Care, 163 Highland Avenue. Present. Uh, Philip Naffa from Harvey Science. Thank you. And is there anyone here from TD Bank, 95 Highland Avenue? Oh, okay. Well, we'll see if they wander in during the meeting. Um, uh, welcome to this open meeting of the Needham Design Review Board, which is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. We've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public meetings, public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Needham Design Review Board is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website and the DRB page, identifying how the public may join. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. DRB meetings do not typically require allowing public comment. Uh, please note this meeting is being recorded and that some, most of the attendees are participating by video conference. Please be aware that other people are able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer unless we discuss it first. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And please, re please speak purely so that we get an accurate record. All the mater supporting materials that have provided members of this board are available on the town's website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. I would like to review the remote meeting procedures for tonight's meeting. Uh, I will introduce each applicant on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will take comments or questions from DRB members. After discussion, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. The building department requires electronic submission of building permit applications. A copy of your DRB application stamped and noted for the type of approval that you receive will be emailed to the applicant by the DRB support staff. That can then be attached to your building permit application. So we will now start with the first item on the agenda. So again, it's Stretch Med Studios, 1093 Great Plain Ave. Uh, Daniel or Brian, do you wanna go ahead? Uh, Dan, you can uh, go ahead. So tonight we're applying for a new sign for a franchisee at 1093 Great Plain Ave. And the new franchisee that's going in, the uh, business is already open and they currently have a, a banner up. And we would like to get the sign that we ordered. We already have it at the location. We'd like to get that installed and receive the correct permissions to do that. And 
that's the reason for us being here this evening. Um, Brian, do you want to add on to that? Yeah, we, um, we, so the, 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 the sign that's already up, it's the exact replica of the sign that was existing beforehand. And, um, I assume you guys have pictures of it. I believe Daniel, you submitted that, correct? Of your new sign? Yes. Yes, we've got, we've got, it was in the packet, so. So to keep it simple, we, 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 had, we just kept everything exactly the same um, in terms of size and scope of what was, was, was in place already. Okay, well, I, I see the pictures here. It's, you wanna describe it a little bit for us? Yes, it's just- Daniel, a, you know, with, what's it made of? What are the materials? It's made of a, a well, they listed there, Daniel. We did Matt list out all the materials, aluminum, and just, it's just aluminum with a channel letter. Okay, yeah, we have aluminum box pan, circular shape, aluminum face with two inch welded returns, vinyl graphics. All right. Well, the bad thing is that you're supposed to get permission for the sign before you build it, because sometimes we may say the proportions on that circle, for instance, fill up the thing. You could use a little more negative space. So uh, we don't we frown upon people showing us the finished sign. You're 100% you're correct. And I apologize. This is a mistake. And we prepared for the worst. And we would just have to use it in another location at some point. Okay or internally, um, but it was an error in the initial order. So someone in the office just went ahead and submitted it and we were like, oh, can't, okay. can't do that. I mean, I, it, it just, so it was a mistake. So we, we apologize for that. Okay, well, why don't I see if there are questions, comments from the board. Um, Len, you wanna start us off? Yeah, my, my initial feedback is that uh, relative to the other signs to the bolt to the left and to the right of it, it looked a little bit disproportionately large. And I do, Mark, to your point originally, I do agree that that circle with the person stretching it seems, uh, seems to be eating up a lot of space and almost a little bit disproportionate. Um, as well as I think the materials, uh, the aluminum, may not necessarily fit well with the uh, the rest of the aesthetic, which looks like it's wood uh, to the left and to the right. So that's kind of just my initial feedback right now. Yeah, I did want to uh, ask Daniel one question. It appears you're telling me that that's a 24 inch high sign. So I think that the image is not correctly scaled because the, the what's shown there is more is probably closer to 34 inches. If, if, you, if you go eight inches to three courses of brick, 24 inches would be three, you know, three sets of those. So um, when, I think that the image is not correctly scaled because um, I'm comfortable with a 24 inch high sign on that facade in that, in that and we've done other ones of that size. So, um, so so I think image wise, we have to more follow more closely the dimensions rather than what it looks like other than to get an idea of how, what it looks like. Yeah, I think the super, he superimposed it exactly not the scale. And um, the, the, the bank, Dedham Savings, has an aluminum channel letter sign uh, that's two stores down in the same building. But taking a look at that, and then um, the sign that it's replacing, the sign that's up is just very inexpensive flat, piece of plastic with a vinyl lettering on it with a frame. Um, okay, that's, that's across fine here. for now, I think. Um, uh, Steve? Um, well, what I find a problem is the size of the logo on the panel. I mean, it's, I scaled the brick at 42 inches, so the, it's clearly not shown at the right scale. But I think that that round disc uh, occupies too much space and should be reduced by a third at least. Um, and then that would give you a little more breathing room to, you know, on either side of the letters. So the, 
the panel may need to be done over with the with the circle and then be spaced out better. I think the materials are fine. The aluminum is what you know state of the art uh, in today's science. They really don't use plywood anymore, uh, like that flora sign, which I think was an old sign that moved there from someplace else, and we allowed them to use that. So I just think that the logo is too big. Okay. Um. Deborah? I would agree with the, the other comments. Um, I think the logo is too big. Um, I, don't, I don't love the, the background color. I don't know if that's the, the logo or what we're seeing down on the table where it's the white letters on the black background. If one or the other is the, the company logo, but... Um, uh, you know, I understand that might be harder to read, but uh, yeah, if, if the overall height is a little smaller, that will fit better on the band with the other signs. I think the, the text is fine. It's just the logo size. So can I comment that I'm looking at the skin care sign that was existing and the word skin care is, is incredibly large. Um, we try to keep our logo to scale just for branding purposes, just without trying to alter it too much. You mean as it relates to the height of the letters? Yeah, exactly. So we keep the, we kind of keep it to scale and within, and I looked at, I looked at skincare and, you know, Camilla's is on the smaller side, but the sign we replaced, if you, do you guys have a picture of the sign that we replaced? No. no. Um, we can, we can share that with you. I actually have a, I have a screen, I mean, I have it up on my, I have, I have a screen share up on my computer now. Um, uh, I, I don't think that's really necessary because we, it's not, the issue isn't the fact that the S or in skin is similar size to your logo. It's how your logo fits on the panel and the proportions of the whole thing that we're concerned with. So, um, so Chad, why don't you, do you have anything else? Yeah, I would agree. And I think when the, um, the logo gets smaller, I would suggest uh, trying to get a little more white space between the logo and the S and a little bit more white space or, or you know, empty space between the D and the edge of the sign. That also looks kind of uh, wedged in there. Um, and I would say if you want, if it's important to keep the proportion of the logo and the font size, then I would just, I think you probably need to shrink the whole thing and make the text smaller, um, which, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily what you want to do. So if it's possible to shrink the logo and not the text, the text height doesn't really bother me. I also agree with um, Deb's point that if you were open to having a dark background and having the word stretch be light as the temporary sign is showing, I think it would look in the same way that the Camellas is an attractive sign on the brick background, that sort of big light colored background uh, on the brick is just doesn't, uh, I think looks quite as nice as it would if you reverse the, the background and the, the stretch light dark um, comparison. The, the logo would also pop a little bit more off of a uh, dark background than it would off of that off white background. So I guess the question is uh, to Daniel, what is the color of that background? Is that a gray or a off white or what is that? The gray, okay. we have the identical sign in Walsley and the same sign in Belmont. So we were trying to go with a similar, a similar look. Yeah, it's not a deal breaker for me. I just think it'll look better. Uh, okay, well, I guess, you know, shame on you for making the sign first. So now we're in a position of, Yep. Trying to be good neighbors. Um, so I guess my question to the board members is, um, given that he's admitted that they made a mistake and they are, did something wrong, is it a, are the objections strong enough that we want them to change? So I do think that you could probably go back to that sign manufacturer and just get the round part smaller and replace that. You know, it needs to be three inches smaller, so not not massively, but it's, 
had you, you know, had we seen this in a drawing format, we definitely would have required that change. I, I so, agree, but, and I'm just I'm frustrated that this happened, and it's a you know it's a forty seven hundred dollar sign, and, no, and we're not I, unsympathetic. So, yeah, no, I guess my question is to, to the board is. Um, given the state of the world, we've been trying to be user friendly as much as possible. Um, is that a deal breaker for anybody to have it that size? I think the logo is still too big. Yeah. Steve and Chad, have you guys, can you guys see the physical picture of the sign? Are you guys Facing your um, opinion on the rendering, I'm just trying to get a better yeah. idea. No, there's that page. We got that page. Okay. Yeah. On we'll on that too. on itself, you guys still feel that the circle's too big. I think it look look a lot better if it was smaller. <laughs> well, my only perspective would be that that our logo is built that way. So if you went on the website and saw the logo, it would be that size in comparison to the sign on the building, look exactly the same. So it may be a little yeah. bit different of a logo if we put the sign up that way. That's just one piece that I, uh, well, I would do, I would disagree with that. I don't think that a person yeah. driving by in a car or a pedestrian walking down the street is gonna notice that the proportions between the size of that circle and the size of the letters is different once they get inside and it's another sign. I mean, we're talking about three inches here is what no, you mean. I agree. I agree that definitely it's not material in any way, shape or form. One thing I'd like to comment on is if, if we, if, is everyone looking at the, the building itself or just the sign? Because when I look at the building, um, the, the sign is fairly small within the space allotted in, in the storefront. Needham floor is next to us. I believe their sign is uh, slightly bigger. Camilla's, it believes, the same size. So within the size of the building, I think the, the logo is less prominent. But if you look at just the sign itself uh, and the space allotted, it could it appear bigger. But on the building, I, I don't, it looked, and, and I'm pretty careful. Um, when we first did layout, we did a couple go arounds with the designer for the meeting with the idea that we don't want to have to redo it again. So we kind of went with all the specifications that we could find, you know, that were on your website and um, with the hopes of it getting passed. And of course, sub subsequently it took a few months for us to get to this meeting and then I find out it got ordered and, you know, that's water under the bridge. But I guess that's my question. You seen the sign within the scope of the building or are you looking at just the sign? Well, we're doing both. The you know, problem with seeing the sign in the scope of the buildings, the imagery is out of scale. So we, we don't have any real sense. I, again, I'm comfortable with the overall size of the sign. I know what a 24 inch sign on that building looks like. I think we've all seen different, uh, different ones as they've changed. You know, the, the, the real estate people, that's a new, relatively new sign in the last couple of years. So we have seen these. So, um, You know, again, I I think it's a what you know it's a it's the quality of the sign is good. I'd, I'd like the design overall. We would have I would have, and I, as you've heard, we've all would have said you need more negative space around that circle, whether it's it relates to your print stationary logo or some of the other items you have or not. Uh, but uh, my objections aren't strong enough that I would fail it at this point, given. I'm trying to give you a break because it's a bad time to open up a new business. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, we've, uh, we've uh, I'm only one person, so. Uh, I appreciate it. I would just mention everyone that being a small business owner, you can't even imagine what we've, we've kind of, we've gone through in a lot. It's just unbelievable. And um, we're just trying to survive really at this point. The help that's come with the SBA, you know, two and a half months payroll did not foresee this being so long. It's so it's, yeah, it's really, really tough. So I, I will, we'll add to that. Um, but we appreciate any consideration you guys can give us. Well, I think the way to proceed is that um, 
I, I would take a motion that we approve it as submitted. Someone wants to amend it and say that they should change the circle or vote no. Uh, you're for, you guys are free to do that for that option. Steve, if you want to, uh, you know, offer the amendment that it, uh, that the sort of, that the round logo piece be changed to a smaller size, you can offer that. Well, I still think that the sign, the logo needs to be reduced by a third. And I would, that's how I would vote. Okay, any other comments? All right, so we, so you want to make it, you want to make a motion that it be. Yes, I move that the sign be accepted once if the logo is reduced by a third. So the condition is the logo reduced by a third. So is there a second? Okay, so that, that motion fails. I would, I would take a motion that we approve the sign as submitted. Second. Someone has to move that. I can't make the motions. So. So moved. And, okay, and Len is seconding that, Rana. Thank you. Um, so we, we have a roll call vote. And I have to find my paper. So uh, Nellie's not here. So Len Karen. In favor. Chad Riley. In favor. Deborah Robinson. Approved. Steve Tanner. Not in favor. And the chair votes in favor. So that's five to one. Four to one, sorry. Uh, so you're approved. Um, and we will stamp the documents for you and they will get emailed back to you. I really appreciate your help, everyone. All right, thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, the next item is Petco Vetco. Uh, where's my agent? So 163 Highland Avenue. So Phil, you wanna go ahead and tell us, I guess I, I, I would, I wanna start if it's okay for a moment, just go over. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, I found the package just a little uh, organized in a way I had a hard time following it initially, so I did sort of print it out and put it together. Okay. So basically what they're asking for is, and you can tell me if I'm correct, uh, is the Vetco internally illuminated letter sign, a second sign with flat letters with adding lighting to the building. Third thing is the replace the pylon sign that Petco currently has. Correct. Um, the last thing is to uh, put up a temporary banner. Correct. Um, so why don't you take us through the various signs? And, and, and I will, but real quick before I do that, I will say that I know we're kind of putting the carriage before the horse here because the um, special permit hasn't actually been approved for the I, for PECO to actually become a vet hospital. Um, the PECO is aware of this and they just wanted me to go ahead and get in the meeting and try to keep the ball rolling while things were, you know, going on there. And so um, I am aware that, you know, you know, this could all, I guess, be for nothing in a sense that if we do get approval tonight and the actual business does not get approval, then this just kind of was, you know, um, a thing for nothing, but that's not for me to make the decision. So um, pretty much what they're doing is they're trying to open the vet hospital in this location and they want to, um, remove the word grooming from the building to um, disassociate it with that part because that is not gonna be their primary objective anymore as the Vetco is going to be their main point of focus. They still will offer grooming, but the Vetco is gonna be their more prominent, you know, um, piece of advertising at this point. So they'd like to install the Vetco total care letters, um, which you are correct, are internally um, illuminated LED channel letters. Um, they will be mounted to the wall um, above where the grooming sign is now. Um, the grooming sign will be removed. Um, the building will be patched and repaired, you know, back to like new condition. Um, the 
Petco letters themselves, nothing will be done with those. And then we will be adding a smaller secondary set of letters that read grooming, dog training, and vet care. Um, those are at the moment um, proposed to be illuminated with a gooseneck style light with some sort of um, energy efficient LED lamp to be placed in them. However, you know, with talks back and forth, we're not sure about the actual um, structure of that column, whether electrical work being done to that would be the best option. Um, there may not be, you know, sufficient access. Um, obviously, we're not going to make the storefront look, um, you know, unapproachable to customers by having, you know, uh, excessive conduit, junction boxes and all this stuff run. Um, you know, on the outside of the column. If, if it's just not an option to illuminate them because of that, then we just, you know, we just won't do it. Um, as far as the panel on the pylon sign, it is pre-existing. Um, we would just be removing the vinyl on site and re-lettering it with a smaller Petco logo and then adding the divider bar and then, you know, the, the Vetco Total Care um, logo. And then the banner would be, you know, a temporary, um, you know, banner just saying uh, coming soon, you know, for any amount of time that the, you know, the town will allow. I know some towns have, you know, 30 days, 60 days, you know, and then it needs to be removed. Um, obviously, we would follow any protocol that, you know, would dictate in that sense. you muted. All right. <laughs> Excellent. So is the, uh, is the door under the grooming sign going to be filled in? Um, what, what do you mean by filled in? Well, it's dashed on the drawing like it's uh, going to be removed and put um, a wall there instead. I don't, I don't believe so. I don't, no one ever gave me a, a detail about the door being removed. I believe that's still going to be the entrance into the to the vet portion of the okay. of the store. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to open it up to the board for comments on any and all of the signs in the package, uh, and then we'll vote them all separately at the end. All right. So uh, what do I have here, Chad? Do you have? Um, sure. Yeah. I one thing uh, just on the temporary banner. I know that the town has kind of come back about uh, concerns about some temporary banner. So I guess maybe if we can loop back and figure out what we can or can't even authorize um, regardless of what we think about the, the banner, that'd be good. Um, one question I have is in the Vetco Total Care, um, the, is that the name of sort of a subsidiary business or, you know, I mean, to my eye, if the Vetco were in a larger font size than total care that would be a little bit more balanced but i'm trying to figure out is the name of the this sort of yeah business. I, think, yeah, all three. I think it's more of like a play on words like everybody's familiar with petco so here's vetco it's their you know subdivision of of the pet store itself now they're going to offer you know actual veterinary services where before um you know you would just go in there for supplies grooming that kind of stuff um I know that PetSmart has their own version of, um, you know, a, a, vet, a vet hospital, um, but I believe it's a, a band field or something. It's, it's a different entity. So I think this is Petco's, um, you know, decision to try to keep it unanimous with their um, trademark and, and their, their image and their branding. Yeah. Well, I mean, it might be the branding, but I think it just it would look better if it was the total care was in a lower, smaller font. Um, and then in terms of the grooming, dog training, vet care, I think generally we try to steer away from a listing out of what businesses do, um, where the signs are typically looking to identify the business location. Uh, and so I um, would want a bit more conversation before uh, I would be agreeable to having those additional lettering on there. Can and then I think the... Um, Go ahead. Sorry. 
I was going to say, and then in terms of the pylon sign, um, you know, I think it's the, the same comment. If it was the Vetco was a little larger and the total care was smaller, I think it would just fit better. It's as it is right now. It's looking similar to the last conversation. It's all looking a little bit um, crammed into that space that's available without much breathing room around it. Okay. Um, I, on, in my opinion, I think, you know, the reason maybe they're going so large with it is because it's a new venture. So maybe people aren't so familiar with it yet. If, you know, if it just said Vetco, maybe they'd say, well, what's, you know, what's Vet Company? Maybe they're not sure. So they're trying to get the word total care so the public can get the idea that, oh, they're offering all the services now, not just, you know, dog food treats and, and training stuff. Um, but that's obviously an option, you know, um, unlike the gentlemen before me, we have not made any signs yet. So that's, you know, that's Appreciate a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we can obviously, you know, if that becomes a, um, you know, a, a condition, we certainly can, you know, make anything any size at this point. Um, what I would ask though is where the word grooming is there now, if we were to, you know, let, you know, move it to the call, are we not, was it not still doing the same thing previously? Are we still not advertising a service? And, and I only uh, asked that where it's, where it's already existing. It was already granted at one point. I, I think uh, when that one was approved, I think it was because there was a separate entrance for people to come in and we were trying to okay. um, be able to identify that other point of access. Okay. And so, you know, I think if we were, if that was still being used and, and we were to look at that signing as orienting people towards coming in a separate entrance, mm -hmm. uh, then you know, I think that's a, a slightly different conversation than just putting it on on a the column and kind of advertising a range of services. And I think your point about the, the Vetco Total Care, um, we when when a business name is somewhat ambiguous, we have tried to work with a business to you know not suddenly rattle off a whole bunch of things that are all their services, but to try to enable them to provide some additional clarification to help people who may be less familiar with it. So the fact that it says Total Care, you know, doesn't isn't a bother to me, but I think just in terms of a hierarchy of the business and sort of a clarifying bit of additional text. Um, that's why I was thinking of a different font size, but you know, if they said, no, our business name is Vetco total care, it's a slightly different conversation. Okay. Do you know which it is, Phil? Is it um, Vetco I, and then they're putting the total care to flush out the idea or is it Vetco total care? Honestly, I don't know that. I never brought that up because that was never, um, you know, I didn't look at it that way. I just saw it as, um, you know, that that was their name and, and that's how they had it on there. Um, again, it can be a question I can ask. And, you know, if we can make some sort of motion and say, okay, if it is found out that it is their licensed LLC name, then we keep it that size. If it's not, then we reduce it and, you know, go forward at that point. Um, you know, being in the sign business, it's always been my understanding to, you know, get somebody off the street, get them to your building you know, with as limited, you know, confusion as possible. I mean, McDonald's doesn't need to say McDonald's anymore. You know that the arches are McDonald's and, and that's, that's the point. So I think with the logo, you know, that they're trying to portray, it gets people to understand that they're offering some sort of vet service in the Petco, you know, building, you know, now, as opposed to that they weren't before. Okay. Deborah. Uh, I'm not muted. Um, I think the, the pylon sign actually is fine as it's shown. That doesn't bother me. I'm having a little trouble reading the scrolling down, looking at the one that's called front elevation southeast. So the, and the, where the Vetco total care is going on this elevation. Am I missing something? I mean, there's a little existing photo up on the top right. Right, I think it's, it's fitting it's in between the red bands on that. Correct. Uh, yeah, correct. It goes, it goes above the grooming door on that upper wall section. So, but those colored bands are staying. So where is it? Centered in, centered in the gray area between the bands. Centered in the gray area. So if you, when you look at the elevation straight on, it's lower than the Petco. Um, I believe, yeah, it would be slightly lower. Yeah. They wouldn't have the same horizontal center line. I mean, that, that to me looks a little bit awkward. I mean, not that you're sort of looking at this straight on the way we are in an elevation. 
Um, but I guess if it's centered in that gray band between the, the narrow red bands, that is the place you want to put it. Right. And where I think the front of the building is so prominent and it, it sticks out, um, you know, it kind of foreshadows the other, you know, the other entrance that I don't think it would be as if the building was the same, you know, yeah, plane yeah, straight yeah. across, you would notice it being that much different. Okay, maybe that's fine. Um, and, and just to go back to the, the pylon real quick, um, Chad, one option that we do have is we have in the past put, um, you know, a, a temporary decal on like the bottom left or the top corner of the pylon sign that, you know, a, a big yellow triangle that would say, you know, coming soon. And what we do is we temporarily put that on the pylon over the permanent decal for, you know, however long, you know, either we choose or we're allowed to. And then, you know, we go back and remove it after so many, you know, months or whatever. And then, you know, that is an option if the banner, um, you know, idea gets, gets knocked down. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll have a little more to talk about that as we go. Uh, do you have any comments on the banner, Deb? Temporary banner idea? No, not, I don't really have any comments. Okay. Uh, Steve? Um, I have a couple of comments. On the pylon sign, you said you were going to strip the old uh, plastic and re-letter it in the field. I usually have seen that there'll be a ghost from the old lettering, and I would recommend they just use new plastic with lettering, slide one panel out, slide one panel in. It's a lot less work than trying to strip that panel in the field. And Believe me, come February or January when this is actually going to happen, uh, I would not prefer to be out there myself picking that vinyl off. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to make that call. Um, if you guys put a motion in that says it has to be a new panel, then that benefits me. Um, but typically, I don't get the say in that. It's just whatever Petco chooses to be either, you know, more aesthetically pleasing or cost effective at that time. Well, this is the first, this is the face first that you see. So Correct. it kind of looks like they cheap out if you see a ghost of the old sign. So I would move that you uh, replace the panel with new acrylic or whatever you're using there. Okie dokie. And then as far as the banner, as it, lo it looks like you're going to have one side that says coming soon and then flip it now to now open. Correct. So I don't really have too much of an objection about that, except that it is over 32 square feet and comes under um, uh, a special review because that's a 40 square foot banner and it would be permitted under uh, that fee, which is uh, an extra two dollars a square foot, and you have two of them, so it would be twice. Okay. So what what is the maximum allowed square footage for a banner, a temporary banner? Well, well it's like a sign, so it's the same sign square we, footage. We, okay. We have reviewed and approved larger ones, but they're only temporary. But that's pretty big. Okay. All right. Um, hey, Len? I'm okay with it overall. I don't have any specific input. I'm okay. Uh, okay. I guess my concerns are a couple. I think you've heard from Chad, and I, I would echo his comments. Uh, whoever designed that Vetco Total Care sign did a poor job. Um, I don't think it's very well designed. As a as a sign or a logo, you know, the the no change in scale, keeping the Vetco at lowercase when the actual Petco is. I understand they they're also a lowercase thing, but the size is significantly different. So I don't love it, but um, I think it would look better if the word Vetco was a little larger. I don't know if you can do that um, outside of them or. Um, well, or I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I'm just the installer, so. Um, I can, the back all I can do say is, we recommended that yep. the thing say so we may do that as a and that's we'll do that as a recommendation and not a requirement if we can find a middle ground there. Um, I may I add one more thing? Yes. I, I think these small letters that they have over here, grooming, 
with the gooseneck lamps. I think they should just eliminate that completely. Yeah, that's where I was going with it. If, yeah, if they that... add something. Go ahead, Chad. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, if there's something smaller right next to the door where we're currently saying grooming, uh, so that I clarify that that's where you went for those particular uh, services, I think it would be better. But I think we would want to look at the overall square feet of all three words together and okay. then make sure that they didn't get too big. But it, we would ha I would think if we entertained it at all, it would have to be next to that other door so people understood not to go in the front retail door for those services. Yeah. Right. And, and did tabulate uh, that for us. So. Obviously, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm paid here to get, you know, the most signage they can, but obviously I'm impartial at the same time because I think that, you know, by losing the word grooming on the column, maybe people would think that they're not offering that service anymore because, oh, you know, oh, the sign used to say grooming over the door. Now it doesn't anymore. So are they not offering that service? Am I, are they now just a vet hospital? Um, you know, does it need to say vet care on the column when it says vet co-total care? Probably not you know, can we eliminate the word vet care and maybe just make grooming and dog training, um, you know, more of a, uh, a side note or a directory, something to that effect. But I, I do think that by removing those two, you are letting the public know that those services are no longer offered at this location where they had been advertised for however many years they're, you know, they've been in business. Well, I do think there are other ways they could do it. They could do it on the glass, or on the storefront. There are other options for them. Okay. Uh, certainly, uh, and when you, you know, you're looking at one projected entrance, Staples also has the same projected entrance. I think it would look a little strange for, of those four giant columns, one of them to have three little black gooseneck lights on it. Um, so I think if we consider something maybe not lit, uh, maybe it doesn't need to be illuminated or that we find a location back on the main wall somewhere near the door that starts to show that form because you're not seeing this from the highway. It's a parking lot. Correct. Only. So you can get it back on the main wall and I think it would still be successful. So some idea of putting it back. Okay. Near the, near the storefront section. Okay. And proposing something like that or something on the glazing uh, even could, could be more, could be as successful. Mark. Yes. Steve. I wouldn't mind those letters over, like to the right side of the door, small, mounted on that wall there, because as you drive in that space, that's like the first thing you read that's in front of you. And if those letters were just smaller, not illuminated, like uh, uh, to the right of the door or something like that, that, that could be acceptable. Well, I think that that door is now becoming the veterinarian section door, so they don't want people with grooming issues going there. They're sending them to back to the main door. Yeah, well, they have vet care listed there. Well, uh, it's just yeah, it's just vet care on that side. They'd have to decide. Well, well, Phil, you might want to talk to them. Okay. Um, about that. Um, otherwise, you know, I think. The, you know, the pylon sign, I agree with Steve, we're going to, uh, I think we should require you to put it on a new panel so that we don't have any potential for ghosting. Okay. Uh, I would agree with that. Um, I'm, I don't know, Chad, I think what if we have in the past sort of made a recommendation, but not a requirement that they rescale the second bottom letters, unless there's sort of massive corporate objection, I don't, I don't have to find a way to write it in a simpler way, but yeah. um, our preference is that you do it, but again, it's it's not so objectionable that we wouldn't let you do it the way it is, in, from my perspective. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Um, but I, th yeah, I think overall, I'd like you to just maybe come back with another idea for the grooming and dog training stuff. Okay. And uh, we can continue you, and you can come back right for the next meeting after you talk with them or we can approve the things we can approve and we deny that one. Um, I, I think they're going to want to obviously to get as much as they possibly can um, where we're still not a hundred percent sure about the other um, matter with them being actually approved for this. I, I don't think waiting till the next meeting is, is going to be a deal breaker. Um, obviously we still have some time on the clock um, and, you know, to use it to our advantage would, 
would probably be um, the best option. Well, we would also, one of our conditions will be none of this happens without planning board approval. So, I mean, we would qualify all our rulings on this based on that. Uh, so for all three applications, but if you want to, uh, so if you'd like, we can uh, vote on the Vetco sign, the pylon sign, and we'll probably vote no on the grooming sign, but you can always come back with something else. Okay. I mean, would you, would you prefer to wait and have me come back with a re, um, a redesigned Vetco total care to, to kind of make things, you know, more unanimous across the board, so to speak? Um, seems like we we're still kind of hung up on, on that sizing of the lettering. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Actually, we just, okay. we, cause we, like we, I said, we have the time. It, it's not like, yeah. you know, they're opening next week and they need to have the sign, you know, nailed down tonight. Okay. All right. So I would take a motion to continue this application to our October 16th. Um, I'll move. I would like to see the elevation drawn better uh, with the signs are laid out. Okay. It's a little faded, Phil, when we look at it on our screens and the, if they can get a darker version for you. Are you talking about the actual photo? The elevation. No, the drawing. Oh, okay. The front yeah. elevation southeast. It's just gotcha. kind of white. It's always pretty white when we okay. look at this on the, our imagery. Yeah, it kind of looks, it looks like somebody scanned a PDF if, if there's a way of just you know, generating a an actual PDF from whatever the, the drafting program was, it would be a little sharper. Okay, not a problem. The next meeting is the 19th, Mark. 19th. Okay, my mistake, sorry. And right there it is on the bottom of the agenda. October 19th. Okay. Um, so I take a motion to, I'm gonna start over. I'll take a motion to uh, postpone the decision till our meet, what did I say? Continue this application to October 19th at 7.30. I'm moved. Second? Okay. So, uh, Len Karen. In favor. Chad Riley. In favor. Deborah Robinson. In favor. Steve Tanner. In favor. And the chair is in favor. All right, Phil. So, so yeah, so if you work on those things, come back, see what you can adjust. Uh, we can work through that. And if you need a little more time, just let Elisa Lichman know and they will keep an eye on, keep you on the next agenda after that. No, I, I think we should, uh, we should have plenty of time to rescale the drawings and, and change stuff over. It shouldn't be that, uh, that big of an issue. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next on the agenda, I see that we have, someone from TD Bank now. Uh, they weren't quite there at the beginning. So we have uh, an application for TD Bank at 95 Highland Avenue. It looks like just changing a fair number of the existing signage. In. So if you would like to go ahead and explain to us, Tiffany. Can everyone hear us? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mark, they weren't on at the beginning, so we might have them just identify themselves for the record. Okay, yes. Could you? Uh, could you tell us who you are, Tiffany? I am Bridget Morris, actually, and Tiffany is here with me as well. We are from One Stop Signs, and we are representing TD Bank today. You're, uh, could you s spell your last name? M-O-R-R-I-S. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead and take us through what's happening here. So what TD Bank is proposing here is pretty much it's just all phase changes. Um, on the monument, they are removing the bank, the open seven days a week, and they're just making the logo just a TD and going with more of a lighter green in the middle. Then the sign EO3, the wall sign, they're going from the darker green to just the TD logo. Um, the ATM sign, they're taking the bank and they're putting the TD logo with the ATM. Um, letters on it. For NO3, FO1, and FO2, they're not touching the letters that say bank 
all they're doing is just the TD logo on those, just face changes for those as well. So no size changes, just strictly face changes. And then also you're going to reskin the awning in just an updated green color? Correct, yes. They're going from the darker green to the lighter green. Okay. All right, so, so it appears all these, you know, again, we're looking at printouts, but it's basically that seems like there's a subtle change in the green background color and that's kind of taking it through all those little graphic uh, images on the site. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, well, I will open it up to questions. Steve? I have no problem with any of this. Okay, Chad? Um, some of the signs all of a sudden start looking a little plain, but I, I think, broadly speaking, uh, better, better, more plain than busier. Okay. All right, Len? I'm okay with this. Okay. Deborah? Yep, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I did take some time to look through it and just trying to understand uh, the various pieces. And it seems very, like it is just a very straightforward, slight color yeah. change. And we've already proved, I mean, I think we went through these extensively, Steve, way back when, when they put this first package together, because it was a lot of signage. And um, so I don't really have any objections either. So I think one quick question. Mark, just occurs to me as I'm looking at it. it, on the building, it looks like around the cornice line, there may have been like a, a green band painted. Is that going to get changed to a different green tone or is it we're talking purely sign changes right now? Just sign changes right now. Okay. Um, I would actually at this point, because this was, you know, fairly cohesive package of information, I would take a motion to approve the six sign modifications as submitted. So moved. Seconded. Seconded. Okay. Uh, vote Len Karen. In favor. Chad Riley. In favor. Deborah Robinson. In favor. Steve Tanner. In favor. And the chair votes yes. Right, so we will, uh, you missed the beginning. So what happens is that the building department requires electronic submissions, Bridget. So we will stamp these and you will get them emailed back to you by Elisa Litchman, our staff person. Okay. And then you can email them into the building department when you apply for the permit, sign permits. Sounds okay. Good. We appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item is to review the Mark? minutes. Of, oh, does that you said approves six signs? Does that also approve the awning? Okay, and awning. I mean, uh, so what? Uh, and I also so I'll take a motion to approve the awning change. So move. Second. Second. Okay, Len Karen. In favor. Chad Riley. In favor. Deborah Robinson. Favor. Steve Tanner. In favor. And the chair is in favor. Thanks, Elisa. Okay. I knew I was going to forget about that awning. Uh, the next is the review of the minutes of September 14th. Any additions, modifications? Is everybody here? <laughs> if you weren't here, don't vote. I wasn't. Okay, so you can abstain. Um, so motion to approve the minutes of October of September 14th. So move. Seconded. All right, uh, Chad Riley. Uh, in favor. Deborah Robinson. In favor. Steve Tanner. Oh, I was not in attendance okay. at that meeting. And the chair is in favor. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Seconded. All right. Uh, Len Karen. In favor. Chad Riley. In favor. Deborah Robinson. In favor. Steve Tanner. In favor. The chair is in favor. So thanks, everybody. That was. Thank you.
and uh, appreciate your patience with the stretch med guy. <laughs>